Well, hi, Elizabeth, and hi, Don. <laughs> Welcome to the <laughs> Chaos Metrics Model meeting this week. I think we actually have some pretty interesting stuff to talk about. Um, so I will kind of, I'll show my screen here. And Elizabeth, how's life? Good. I, I will be better soon. I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there's um, just a little bit of background. I think this is obvious. This stems from me and just kind of conversations I've had. So I'm not speaking on behalf of anybody or the community, but we have a couple really important assets in the Chaos Project that are documents. Um, and so those are our metrics, those are our metrics models, and those are our practitioner guides. And um, Don had sent me a note earlier that we started actually developing metrics back in 2016. Is that correct? Isn't that when the chaos project started? Yeah, I mean that's crazy. It's just it's kind of weird to think about that it's been that it's been that long. Yeah, we got a lot of history for sure. That's crazy. So, um, but I think like any good documentation, over time it becomes bad. <laughs> It becomes tired, it becomes outdated, it hasn't been looked at for a long time. And again, speaking on behalf of myself, I really think there's a need to kind of reflect on the metrics that we have, the metrics models that we have, and the practitioner guides that we have, and think about the maintainability of those, um, the impact that those are having for people, um, and just kind of how we think about them into the future. So that's kind of my take on on where things are at. And as the metrics model meeting, I'm hoping we could have this conversation um, with respect to the metrics models and kind of think about what we have available to us uh, or like what's been published, um, how we think about the future of these models. Uh, we had talked a little bit about how we understand people's interest in these models. And so I'd like to just begin this conversation here about kind of maintaining this, this core piece of documentation that we have. Elizabeth or Don, do you want to add anything to that? Or at least my thoughts, have a reaction to my thoughts or anything? Think I'm crazy? <laughs> I mean, I definitely think sustainability should be top of mind for us, especially as we move forward and expand the project in so many other areas. So um, I am I am interested in finding a solution that is sustainable for a small group of folks, like the core folks who um, are going to be the ones that are responsible for keeping track of all this. So um, yeah. Don, any comments for the record? <laughs> Yeah, I mean this is this is a this is a hard problem, right? We we have a lot of stuff for chaos. Um, not all of the metrics models and metrics are of the same quality. Not all of them are particularly well used. And I feel like I feel like the I don't know, the idea behind the metrics models was that you could um, you know, you could implement a whole set of metrics together. But I don't, I don't know that people really use the metrics models that way or, or any way. And are they really, the way that we've defined the metrics models, are they really any better than somebody writing a blog post about how they use a collection of metrics together? I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to do with them. But, you know, on the one hand, a lot of people have put in um, a fair amount of effort to work on these metrics models. And, and some of them are, are really interesting, like the viability ones, I think, are particularly interesting. But, but I don't think we can maintain all of the stuff that we have as a community. We, don't, we just don't have enough people working on metrics and metrics models to be able to to be able to maintain all of them. And so I think we need to think hard about what we want to do with the metrics models. I mean, we won't, we won't delete them. We'll leave them, we'll leave them there for the people who are using them. But I tend to think we probably shouldn't focus on them. I think maybe we don't develop new metrics models. We encourage people to write blog posts about how they're using metrics together. 
and and find a way to promote promote those because i i don't i don't i don't know that the metrics models have ever achieved what we what we wanted them to achieve so i don't know what to do with them and i think the other either we i mean we can't we can't keep up on this path i don't think so like the only other way we could do that and keep continuing to develop them and maintain them is to grow this group of folks that have that expertise and interest and time to do it and energy. And I think we've kind of tried that in the past and we have not really been successful in growing that group of folks and having them stick around. So um, in, a, in a consistent way. Uh, so I don't, know that we can rely on that and i think i i don't know i i i'm wondering if um if we if there is a way for us to do a survey or try to get some of this data i mean like we can look at the number of hits on the website um which we can do but also it doesn't really tell you to to your point who's using them and how they're being used so we don't have that insight into like are they even useful because if they're not useful if people are just looking at the website and like oh that's interesting but i will never do anything with this information then this is all just wasted effort and we should focus our area focus our energy on something else like the practitioner guides that are super useful um so i don't i don't know how to get that information aside from a survey out to just the universe to, on linkedin or wherever to try to grab those external that external community of users. Should we do that? I, I, actually, I wouldn't, I'll be honest. I, well, um, because if, if we're thinking about de-emphasizing them, asking a whole bunch of questions about them is gonna raise awareness and possibly encourage more people to, to use them or to, to, I don't, I don't know. I, 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 I fear that it could, it could, backfire because our so let's just let's just back up the purpose of 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 this so so the reason we're talking about this is because we just don't have enough people to maintain all of the stuff that we have um and so if we if we don't then we those of us that are active in the project get to pick where we where we focus our energy and we can de-emphasize the models and as long as we're not deleting anything and as long as they're still there for people to use if when we de-emphasize them we get a bunch of people organically asking us hey what happened to the metrics models where did they go i can't find them anymore then we know that they were getting that they were getting use whereas if we do a survey that's actually going to promote something that we're not sure if we want to keep that's super valid and i i think that that has been a, str a strategy used that it, it's, it's a very useful strategy <laughs> just turn something off and see who complains and you know if people then complain it's like okay we'll bring them back I do wish there was a way for us to, and this is a separate conversation, I think, but there was a way for us to have insight into who is using what metrics and how they're being used. Because that seems to be a huge gap in our in our own data. And I don't know how to I don't know how to fix that. That's a totally separate conversation, but that's just something that would be really helpful to the project if we had some some kind of way to know. Yeah, and because we don't have like any sort of dependency link, <laughs> like we'll just never know. We'll just never know. And yeah. it's possible that somebody reads it and it just makes them smarter to think about metrics. And that's useful, even just in its own right, that you don't think about a metric alone, that you think about it in combination. And if any of the models kind of got somebody to that spot, that could be helpful. Okay. Yeah, I feel like some of the models have been have been really useful, like the viability ones. I've I've found those a useful way to think about viability. 
the starter project health metrics model. I like to think that people have found that useful because it helps them get started with a few, a few metrics. So I feel like, you know, some of them are useful. I just, just kind of don't know what to do with the rest of them. Well, here's the rest of them. <laughs> <laughs> Let's um, talk about so community fatigue. I guess I feel like <laughs> Very, very pertinent. So, um, so Elizabeth, we can see how these are being interacted with on the website, like through the through WordPress. Um, At least views, yeah. So, to Don's point, I'll go to this point. The people who participate get to pick. So maybe we could sort through what we would propose. I, it's probably important to bring this to the community before we <laughs> just rip off the Band-Aid, but it might be nice if we could kind of represent how we would go about doing that. Because mm -hmm. um, then we, because then once we decide what we're going to pick and maintain, then I think it could hit maybe this other point of the blog posts, I don't remember, wherever it is in there. But saying, you know, from here on out, if you have a model, we're going to recommend that you produce a blog post, like we'll maintain these. We're going to archive some, we'll maintain some, full stop. And then if you have a new one that you'd like to bring forward, for example, maybe this risk metric model, it's actually a blog post. We encourage this one down here by Georg, but we encourage that to be a blog post. Um, so how... Pretend that, pretend, pretend that we got the, like, the, is it fuzzy consensus? I can never remember. I always want to call it fuzzy consensus. But it's the, not, it's not. No, it's I know, I always want to call it that. Lazy consensus. Lazy consensus. So pretend we get lazy consensus from people and they're like, sure, go ahead and, and make the changes. So like, what would be the, maybe the order of events we would go about determining what gets picked? Do you want to look at usage data just off the internet, off the website? Would that be a place to start? I think that's a good place to start. What do you think, Don? I would I would agree with that. I think usage is a good place to start. Do you do you have that, Elizabeth? Yeah. Do you want me to share my screen, or do you want? Okay, I guess you do. <laughs> <It's a whole laughs> <message>. <laughs> Liz, the unsharing. Okay, um, share. There we go. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> you can see like starter project health is really popular. Um, so that would be one to save and to just, not archive. Yeah, not archive. Same, I think, with collaboration development index. I don't know if we want to cut it off like I don't know what our threshold is for for views if we just or if we say we're taking the top five and that's all we're going to focus on or top 10 I, think, I don't know I I would approach this I, okay let me let me change my answer I would approach this very differently um I would I would take a step back and what um what do we want to do with the models, the models themselves. Do we, as a community, want to keep metrics models um, at all? Like, should we even have metrics models? Like, do we want to just de-emphasize them from the website and the people who are using these, because clearly some of them have use, they can still access them, they can still get to them. Um, so it's not, it's not like, do we keep five and get rid of the rest? It's, what what do we want to focus on? Like think I think we need to just think a little more like long term, big picture. What what do we want to do yep. as a community? And then I think that question, if the answer is however, if if the answer is yes, let's just de-emphasize them all together. Then we have a path to go down, which is I'm guessing kind of they're still accessible, but they're kind of de-emphasized off the web page and in yeah. our conversations. Yeah, and we just don't we don't spend a lot of time promoting them. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, I think I think the the starter project health metrics model. I think the reason that that one is is popular is because I did a whole bunch of talks about it. Um, you know, I did a whole bunch of presentations before I had the practitioner guides um, about how to get started with with project health metrics. So now that talk is the practitioner guides and using that as a framework. But I used to use the starter project health metrics model as the framework for that talk. Um, and so I think that is probably why that one's popular. Maybe it's maybe it's outlived its usefulness now that we have the practitioner guides. Mm -hmm. So if you oh. were going to talk in that situation, if you were going to do another talk about just getting started, you'd probably you would start with the practitioner guide. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've pivoted that talk entirely to, to be focused on the practitioner guides. Okay. Um, so like that, that's why that one's popular. I don't, I don't know that. Yeah. When we did, I remember when you developed it, like we did promote it a lot. Mm -hmm. I think there yeah. was a blog post. It probably ended up on LinkedIn. And I think we were just saying, you just like, you need I, to get started. I wrote an open source.net blog post about it. Yeah. It got, it got a lot of attention because it was, and people found it like a useful way to, to get started, to think about project health. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I feel like that one's kind of outlived its usefulness. Do we know why some of these others are so popular, like collaboration development index? That one, I think that was developed by, um, also promoted. I think it was developed by Yahui and folks that are part of the open oiler. So I think it got quite a bit of presentation during when it was first developed in in the yeah. in that area. So this one too, I think community activity was one that they worked really hard on and really did a deep dive. May have even been a blog post about that too. I don't remember now. Funding, I don't think funding is interesting to me because I don't think we've done anything with that. As far as promotion it's, and it's, it's a super hot topic right now yeah so maybe this part this is an indicator that there we could do something else with funding mm -hmm. i don't know what that would be but um yeah so what is um for anybody on the call what is if, if you could pick like a, a path you know irrespective of what anybody else thinks <laughs> is it to to de-emphasize the models altogether? Would it be to keep a handful of them and de-emphasize a select set of them? Do you not feel like you have enough information to make that decision? I mean, I know what I, I would want to do, which what do you is, <laughs> I would, I would, cease development of all of these, I would tell Compass or whoever, if you want to continue or keep these alive, you're going to have to fork them. Fork them and do whatever you want with them, but we are not going to be... Uh, so I would sunset them. I mean, I would, again, keep them out there, so for just not to break links and things, but um, I would, that's what I would do. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't keep any of them. The hot ones, maybe the starter project health um, but like to Don's point, that's already in the practitioner guides. The funding one, maybe make that a practitioner guide or something. Some something. I don't know if practitioner guide is the right venue for that, but um, something. But the rest, I would, I would let somebody else take them and run with them. Other thoughts? Looking at you, Don. <laughs> Um, I think, I think we, if somebody wants to do something else with them, they'll fork them and do it. I don't think we have to encourage that. I think we just, we just de-emphasize them. We just stop talking about them. We just stop doing maintenance on them. We, I don't know. We decide whether they're important or not. Okay. So like as a collection, it's a de-emphasizing, not as... Yeah. Is that what you were saying? I'm not trying to. Yeah, no, okay. that's what I was saying. I say we just we just de-emphasize them. If people want to keep using them, they can, but they're not maintained anymore. 
would you want to put a disclaimer on the top of them that says these are not actively maintained? I would, yeah, I I would, but I, it would be kind of an all or nothing. Like I would do it for all of the metrics models. And I would say that chaos is no longer um, developing metrics models. And so this is no longer being maintained so that it doesn't feel like we're singling out any, it, so somebody doesn't land on the page and be like, feel bad that, you know, theirs was signal, singled theirs out. was singled out. It's like, I think it's an all or nothing thing. This is a terrible model. And therefore <laughs> We just we just don't we don't have enough people to maintain all of these metrics models and all of the metrics and I think we need to we need to focus on the metrics because that's where chaos has um, historically been. I mean that's kind of what we do we do metrics and software and the metrics models the collections of metrics just um, no nobody really knows what to do with them and we're I mean I've, I've I've liked it I mean the conversation has been. Yeah. I think super helpful for us. Like we can't be at this spot without having done all of this work. I don't. Um, so that's so that's good. So then, what in that scenario? If I'm looking at the viability ones, because I agree, those are ones that had been developed and we've promoted them. Like, what is there a way that we could still have them as models, but then also kind of identify them as ways to be promoted or um, ways, I, I, I'll say it, like become a practitioner guide, <laughs> like. I would say become a guide, a guide of some sort. Let's okay. not include the practitioner guides. We can have lots of other types of guides. Like what would be a, okay, so, um, so what, okay. So what kind of guide, like an expert guide? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I would just call it something else because the practitioner guides are pitched at, at okay. newbies and viability is not really a newbie topic. It's it's okay. super complex, which is why we ended up with five metrics models. Okay. <laughs> so I'm trying to take a note here on this. So yeah. um and we have we have um the models aren't going away. They're still going to be there if people still want to reference them. We're just not maintaining or updating them anymore. And yeah. and Gary wrote a really nice set of blog posts to go along with them that kind of describe how to think about, about viability. Um, and we had him do these as metrics models because we needed to fit it into some sort of a format. Okay. Um, but we could... We could put together a series of sort of like, yeah, maybe, maybe they're expert guides mm -hmm. that people could write about anything because the practitioner guides have a very specific format. Um, Do you think the expert guide would follow a format like the practitioner guide? No, I think that because each of the expert topics would be different enough. Like the, the reason the practitioner guides follow a format is because they are for new people. And it's like, here's... Here's, here are the things that you need to do. And it just steps people through that. Whereas an expert guide wouldn't necessarily need to have any specific format. The format would be different depending on what the topic was so that they wouldn't be constrained by a particular format. Okay. So they could look a lot like the metrics models. So this maybe, whole maybe just more details. So this Sorry. whole conversation begs the question about the ISO standards, because weren't we going to make those around the metrics models? So mm -hmm. that's a, just another piece of this conversation we need to consider is what happens to that. I am going to add, um, how about if I add some time on the board agenda? Cause this feels like something we should probably have a discussion about since we have a board meeting coming up, what, next week? Mm -hmm. Do you want me to add this to your section, Matt, about metrics, metrics models and- kind Yeah, of the that'd future? be great. Okay. Yeah. Well, why don't you go ahead and add a slide. Tell me how much time you need or update the agenda with some additional time. Okay. because we, we we don't have a ton of new agenda I, items. I can be quick. I'll just say, here's the thorny problem. I could also, um, 
I could also move it later in the agenda so that we could make sure that we have time to talk about it. Okay. So that if we if we do need extra time, let me let me think about that. I'll make I'll make some adjustments. Okay. Just tag me where you want me to put anything. Okay. We can just put it in your metrics and metrics models section. Oh, okay. Just add a slide there. Okay. Because I feel like that should be part of and you, so that you can decide what order you want to do it in. Like, do you want to? Yeah, price those slides. Like those slides are yours to change. However, you want okay. to do the updates. Okay. Um. Okay, this is helpful, and I agree it's not going to be easy to get this done. Um. I guess I'll make a comment because you brought it up, Elizabeth, on the ISO standards. Um. I am starting to wonder about the utility of that. <laughs> like the amount of overhead that is going into this and the amount of time and trying to put one metric. I mean, the amount of time that it's going to take to put one metric model through this process <laughs> is it's so many hours. Mm -hmm. And I, I really have to wonder about the utility of doing this. Yeah, the return on the hourly investment doesn't I don't know. Uh -uh. And if it's to help people at a company have a more structured conversation around using a metric, man, that's, I don't know. Part of me is like, you figure out how to have that conversation in your company. If if you can't have that because it's not an ISO standard, that's not my problem. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's really the holdup. Because there, there's no way we will get all of these standardized at this rate. It's just not gonna happen. And I don't have this amount of time push through it. So I'm bringing this up to the board as well. Now that I've kind of been <laughs> through this process a little bit. <laughs> mm -hmm. And everybody's super helpful and very nice. Not a criticism of that at all. It's just more about the, the like nature. I joked, I think at one point it's like, it's about the pace of publishing a paper in academe, which can take like three years. And the utility of that is a personal utility. Like I get something out of doing that effort. And I'm I'm wondering what, and my university gets something out of me doing that. Like there, there are reasons you do that. The institution has clear, like that's a clear structure. That's something we look for. I just don't know what that is with an ISO standard at this point. I think also given that we're we're just resource constrained, we don't necessarily have enough people to do all of the things that we want to do. Mm -hmm. It feels like this isn't something we should be spending our time on. Right. Like I'd rather spend my out that hour a week on the metrics themselves, mm -hmm. just as our core asset. Yeah. And it's not just an hour a week, right? It's an hour a week in a meeting about it. Oh yeah. Well, and then Elizabeth and I meet again this afternoon for another hour <laughs> <laughs> to actually like sit down and, and type it out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so these are, I agree, we can bring it to the board and we should definitely start circulating this through the community. Um, mm -hmm. You said you already put it on the agenda, Matt? For the weekly community, Did somebody say that. I okay, I'll put. It. Do you want me to put it on there then? That'd be helpful. Okay. Um, and I think right now, this is kind of where we, as a group here, are leaning to de-emphasize them all in full. Of course, link stay and all that kind of stuff. Um. Um, we don't develop any new ones. If we do, if somebody has a combination of metrics they want to bring forward, we would recommend they write a blog post and we will help promote that. And then the existing metrics models, 
um, would be potential candidates for a new set of guides. Maybe we could just um, run them all through chat GPT and have chat GPT just write the guide. Just <laughs> no. It's all done. <laughs> you got to push button right guide. <laughs> <laughs> I would be actually curious to see what it's That's actually not a terrible idea, but <laughs> <laughs> right? sometimes it's spot on. It's kind of kind of scary. Um, I think we'd have to kind of figure out that would look like and I, I i mean i suppose some of the metrics models could be candidates for practitioner guides as well if you felt that they fall in the category of helping newcomers to metrics is it fair to say that because like we had the starter project health metric model if it kind of transitioned into the guide yeah, but I basically made uh, three guides that covered that topic. Okay, what were so the that guides? Already... Uh, oh no, I'm not. I'm saying that like as an example, you did that here. Like this, it, it was a source yeah. of inspiration to like create these guides. Is what I yeah, asked. yeah. It was a source of inspiration to create the practitioner guides yes. series. Frankly, yeah, and so that's what I'm saying is like the metrics models for us can serve could still serve as that source of inspiration to potentially write a practitioner guide if it seemed suitable or an expert guide, if that made more sense. I would say expert guide, Perfect. we'll stop. Yeah. The Perfect. metrics models are too complex. Um, that's why they're metrics models. I don't see any of these that would be kind of beginner topics. Okay. Nothing left here. Emma Irwin had proposed um, the use of playbooks at one point, so maybe this is a play. Their playbooks or something. Do you remember that? She kind of had a specific. Yeah. Who? Sorry, I missed who. Emma Irwin. Oh, Emma. She kind of had like a specific, almost format in mind too. So maybe we can have something to resurface and find. I don't know. Yeah. Mm, but I, I think this is a different conversation, but I, I hear your point too in that other conversation that wasn't here, Don, that like we don't want to just shift the the burden from here to a guide and then we're kind of in the exact same spot. It's just called the guide. Yeah. yeah, I actually I actually don't think I would encourage people to shift them to guides um, the way you wrote in the notes. Um, I think that there are a couple of these that we might want to write guides about because they're important topics, but I wouldn't say that, um, I wouldn't say that they're candidates for a new set of guides because that's just shifting the problem. I would just delete all of those, all those words, to be honest. Just to um, not create confusion. Yeah. Yeah. Because the only, I, I think that, I mean, I think that if we're sunsetting these, that viability is a really important topic and that we should have a guide about viability. That That's my my take on it, but I can work with Gary on that. Like that whole set. Mm -hmm. Yeah, plus the viability starter model. Oh, yeah, I see that, yep, okay. Yeah. But I think the rest can just live on as, as models. Under their current structure, like no need to reformat yeah. them. Yeah, just put a disclaimer at the top that we're no longer maintaining metrics models, but we're focusing on metrics and software. Okay. Like olden days. Like the olden days. <laughs> um, can I, so I'm going to keep asking you about guides. Like, can I, can I think about guides as part of the documentation output from chaos? Like I'm, like the the metrics are uh, clearly they're a documentation asset to the project that we promote, we talk about, we have them on the web page. 
And so same with the practitioner guides. To me, they're, they're ways of thinking about those metrics. And they seem like something that is a document asset. Mm -hmm. So it's still, it's okay to think about it that way. Cause then I'm, a, then I'm really quite happy. Yeah. Okay. No, absolutely. I mean, I think that, um, you know, what, what we've learned about Metro, uh, about uh, the chaos project over time is that um, we have this, this, you know, Callie and I give this tsunami of data talk. I think Sean's given it too, but we, we just have this, the metrics generate the tsunami of data that people just don't, don't know what to do with. Yep. And so I think focusing on some documents that help people figure out what to do with all of this stuff that our metrics and our software um, output, I think I think having documents that help people make sense of that are, are good. The practitioner guides are how to get started. I think having some expert guides for more advanced topics would be would be also good. Okay. And then supplemental blog posts for new ways that people think about bringing those together and really just probably trying to make the effort to get it into, uh, what is it now? Opensource.net. I kind of don't even know, but like yeah. that, like trying to get these published as ways to yeah. think about. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So who's going to do all that? Well, I think it's, to me, it's a lot less work so if we pretend like we sunset the list that's here all right so we just put the disclaimer on and i no longer have to think about models like that's out of my mind <laughs> and we we still have the links and all that kind of stuff and let's say we spent time in this meeting for example thinking about a guide an expert guide that dealt with viability just that one issue or we spend time asynchronously thinking about that one issue i'm thinking out loud here um and then as people have new ways of thinking about how to bring metrics together for example a risk metric model really what our messaging is is to georg in this case we encourage you to do that. We'd like you to write a blog post on how you think about how these metrics go together. Um, we may encourage you to submit it to opensource.net, maybe give a talk about it. Like you, as the developer of that idea of bringing those metrics together, and here are a couple of ways that you could promote it and we can help you in that promotion. That's mm -hmm. my thought. And that gets so much burden off of my head. Yeah. Cause I think honestly, I think I honestly, I wouldn't make more work for, for us. Right. I think we, we de-emphasize these, we put a disclaimer on them and that's the work I think that, that we need to do as a, as a team. Mm -hmm. And then we encourage people to write blog posts that fits right into the, the comms team strategy. Um, mm -hmm. And then honestly, if, if we do that, I would get rid of this meeting and, you know, a few of us can work asynchronously on this viability stuff because I right. think we can take the blog posts that Gary wrote, the viability metrics models, and I think we can probably turn that into some sort of some sort of expert guide. And I'm happy to help work on that with with Gary and anybody else who's interested in it. I love it. But I think we can do that asynchronously. Like I wouldn't I wouldn't okay. make a big deal of that. We can there's no rush, right? We've got the models that people can still look at because they're still there. Um, but I do think a viability guide would be, would be nice to have some sort of expert guide. That's, that's great. And I like your point about connecting with the comms team. Mm -hmm. I didn't even thought that, but I think that's a, because well, that's how you get blog posts now, right? You yeah. You put a thing to the comms team. I would like to write a blog post about X. And so, so this just fits right into the, you know, strategy that we already have. Uh, I love it. What do you think, Elizabeth? Yeah, that makes sense. But a lot of people have worked on these these metrics models. I think de-emphasizing them is going to be is going to be hard. I think that's going to be a hard discussion in the community meeting and in the board meeting. You know, and I need to not be snarky and say, "Fine, then you maintain them." You know. Well, that 
that's a valid point though because yeah you can work really hard to launch something but then like the rest of us are the ones that have to keep be caretakers so like it, it's a valid it's a valid thing to to it's a valid point to make is that yes you're you know no one's taking away the the hard work that has been put into the original doc but like what happens next you know it's a lot of like drop and leave so yeah peculiar go ahead you're muted oh hi i hear you okay i was like is maintaining them the problem uh, if that's the problem we can as well ask them the information mechanic like somebody or people are interested in maintaining them but if that's not a problem there, what then? I think I agree with what you're saying. Yeah, I think part of the problem is that a lot of them are are kind of low quality, and um, they have a lot of they have a lot of typos, and we're not we're just not sure that people are even using them for anything. So we're a little bit concerned that you know we've got these we've got these things out there that that nobody's using that. Um, the quality of some of them is not great. And, and just what do we, what do we do with them? And if we, if we keep metrics models, then the, the maintenance burden will continue because if we, if we don't decide to sunset them, then we'll continue to have people developing more and more of these, these metrics models. And then it gets to be a, even a bigger problem to, to keep the, the quality up and, and maintain them over time especially if we're not convinced that people are actually using them for anything. Is yeah. there a way to ask, to find out if people are using them, if a community or project or products that are using them? We don't, we don't know that for sure. That's the hardest problem to solve in open source is who is, who is using your stuff. Um, one of the things we talked about it, it was either in a, another meeting that I had with with Matt and Elizabeth, or it might have been at the be very beginning of this meeting before you joined. But what we talked about was if we if we de-emphasize them and people can't find them and they're looking for them and they were trying to use them, then we'll know pretty quickly that um, that maybe that was a mistake because people will people will yell that they can't find them and then we'll know that people were using them. And if nobody if nobody yells that they can't find them, then maybe nobody was using them. Oh, okay, I got that. Thank you. Yeah, peculiar. I'll make one more just comment. It wasn't with the models, but um, Elizabeth and I have tried to like identify people to help. This was before before we're doing the audit that we're doing right now. But we've tried to work on having people help maintain metrics and do prior audits, like build community around that. It is very difficult on a number of different levels so one is there's not a lot of people who have a real good deep understanding of say the metrics or the models that are comfortable to make those changes um and we've just it's been really tricky to kind of build community around maintaining those documents so that's been another challenge for us as well okay i got that um so we're gonna talk about, yeah, go ahead. Okay, I'm just thinking if um, it's made open, there might be people who might want to maintain it to that like still, because in maintaining them, uh, people get to learn more about them and be able to update them. So instead of the, you said the emphasize, or something yeah, like that. I think I would probably lean towards that type of engagement around our metrics. Okay. Okay. And so I think if we have a lot there, and I think we're going to suggest to de-emphasize a few of those as well. But if people want to help in that maintenance, I think that would be a great place to do it. Because then, even from a like a maintainer perspective, Elizabeth and I don't have to work with two different groups of people <laughs> that are one kind of maintaining the metrics models and one that are maintaining the metrics because that's also quite a bit of work in itself and helping people through that process and I think if we could just focus on the metrics that's the way to go 
Okay. That, that tends to be the metrics are what I hear people talk about. So when I, you know, when I go talk to people, they're like, oh yeah, I was just looking at all of your, all of your metrics. And it, it seems to me like we've, we've lost a bit of our focus as a project. We're doing so many different things that if we, if we put our focus back on the metrics, we can improve the quality of the, the metrics, which seems to be the bits that people, people really use. And then, um, and then we'll have, I think, better assets for people as a as a group if we if we put the focus back on the metrics. All right, we are at the end of our time here. It's a super helpful conversation. Um, you can kind of see where we're leaning. Oh, like I said, I'll, we'll bring this up in the board meeting. We'll bring this up in the community call, and we're about ready to have a metrics meeting. <laughs> in 10 minutes and a very similar conversation will likely unfold there as well. So um, thank you everybody for your time and your feedback. It's very much appreciated. Take care. <laughs>